Have you figured out your niche? Are you helping adding value to other people's lives? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Munira's Musings with your host, co-author of Conversations with Top Real Estate Investors, Volume 3, Munira Zahabi. Hi, everybody. Greetings from Chicagoland and Munira's Musings presents Daniel Gomez today. Hey! How you doing, Manero? We're live. It's working. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm pumped up. So much (laughs) Thank you for having me on your show, Manero. I'm honored. I'm excited. I just feel the energy right now. You know, here's a definition of persistence right now. Here's a definition of tenacity. You know. I have to be. If it doesn't work, then we have a problem, right? (laughs) And I don't like problems. I mean, like my here. problem is my my solution is to be the solution. There you go. That's I, I like, that's a good way to see it right there. You, you're the solution. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, you know I used to work in a hospital and people used to come up to me. I used to have little old ladies, you know, in California, little Hispanic old ladies, and you know, old ladies. They would come and scold me because I didn't know how to speak their language. One, and two, <laughs> I have this label on my head that says. Tell me about your problems, I can fix it. So, to chat aside, thank you. <laughs> no worries, no worries. It's always good to chat. So, Monera's Musings presents Daniel Gomez today. Today is a special day because one, we've got our uh, Facebook Live working. And two, it's working. And, Woo! and Daniel Gomez is a bestseller author today, and his book is launched at Amazon. But before we dive into you, I just wanted to bring to you and say um, to everybody what this show is about. The show is about Manira's Musings. It's about people who are adding value, it's enhancing other people's lives. I noticed when I, when I asked one lady about what she was doing, and she was doing a lot of things with organization. And when I asked her, she said she didn't know the value of her work. And I decided, no, 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 this doesn't cut it. Let me just go out there and expose her and promote her in my way. So that's what I did. Now, in my journey, I've got about 120 um, Facebook lives already recorded and more scheduled. But in my journey, I have met awesome people. Awesome. And in that, you know, I, I hope this work is helping them because this is about you. So, you know what? You're pretty awesome yourself, Manera. I got to say that you're you're an amazing woman. I've had the pleasure of knowing you almost for a whole year already, and you know you're just you're you're you're. I don't think you realize how awesome you are. So I want to tell you that because you're giving props to all these 140 people that have been on your show, but you yourself, you're amazing and you're awesome. So I want you to know that today. Oh, thank you so much. So Daniel, what's the big news? Tell us. Tell us. Well, Today is the launch day. Today we were born to fly. Today, look, I got my little copy of my book right here. You were born to fly. It's bigger than me, Manura. <laughs> Congratulations. There you go. It covers, I think the picture looks better than me, so I'll put the picture on there. But no, I'm excited. My book launches today, October 2nd, here on Amazon. You got the Kindle version, you have the hard copy version, and it's just it's a great opportunity right now just to take advantage of a new season in in life. This book is to inspire people, to encourage people, to love themselves, to believe in themselves. And I think that's what the world needs right now. I think there's too many hurting people out there that they undervalue themselves, Manero. They undervalue themselves and they don't have the confidence that they need to just live everyday life. Suicide rate is at an all time high, Um, not just with high school students, which I love speaking to high school students, but with just adults, male men, everybody, just as the it's 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 astounding just the statistics that are coming out now of just men that are committing suicide because they just don't know how to handle life. And it's just if this book as let me tell you, I had a um I had a CEO call me and just talked to me and said, Look, I'm not gonna sponsor your events. I was like, Okay, well good. <laughs> he goes, But I'm gonna sponsor your book because I really like your book. Your okay. book touched my heart. And what he did is for the next 
200 hard copies, not the ebooks, but the hard copies of the book, he's already paid a third of the price. So from the price of it being $14.95 in Europe to only $9.95, he, he's going to sponsor the next 200 copies of the books that I sell hard copy version. So San Antonio, South Texas, everybody around the world, from is uh, international, every, wherever you're at, buy this book for $9.95, the hard copy. It's an amazing because you have your checkpoints, Manura. I don't know if you can see them right there. there but you have the checkpoints right there where you have to actually ask questions, answer the questions. And the feedback that I'm getting is people love these questions because it's making them think for themselves for the first time in a long time. Because most of the time we're busy and we really never take time to see what's going on in Manura, to see what's going on in the inside of Daniel. And you know what I realized? When I resigned from my job last year to take care of my wife, after all the busyness faded away, I, w I didn't like who I was. I didn't like who I was. And I had one of the main chapters here is unforgiveness. And I had to learn to continue to forgive myself for things that I had done in the past. Because as a leader, I could have done things a little bit differently, well, a lot differently, to be honest with you. And the reflection that I did for myself, I shared that in my reflection points in my book. And I think it's going to really help people just heal themselves because what happens when you're hurting, you hurt other people, first of all. That's true. But the thing is, you don't realize that you're hurting other people because you're so hurt yourself. You're kind of blind. You have an illusion to say because you're just stuck in that mindset. You're stuck in who you are. And you don't realize that you're loving, you're hurting your kids, your wife, your husband, you're hurting those closest to you. And you know how I know this? Because that was me. You've been there, right? I've been there. So you talk about in your book, from what I've heard, I've, I've read parts of it, but what I've seen is that this is your true life story of different events in your life, right? Yes. I talk about I talk about um, people in my life that have impacted me for the positive or that I've learned life lessons from. I talk about my life. I talk about my wife, my son, and you know I I, I couldn't write about everybody. Everybody I talk to, a friend of mine goes with. Am I in your book? I'm like, well, maybe the next one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and and uh, and my daughter Alicia, I really wanted to talk about her in the book, but just the, the story that I have with her. That's probably like three chapters because my daughter is the love of my life. Alicia, I love her with all my heart. She's my baby girl. She's my princess. And, you know, there was a time in there that, that we really didn't, we're, we're the same personality and we, and we kind of bump heads sometimes. And our relationship has been, has been so blessed this year because I myself forgave myself and changed who I was from the inside. And it's opened up an opportunity for her to, just spend time with me and we talk and it's just it's an amazing song. My daughter Ali, she's gonna have her own book probably. <laughs> no. And that's what it is about, right? Is because when we start forgiving ourselves, right? Is that when we, we are able to shine that light from inside out to the world, right? Yeah, I and mean, and and the thing is we all were born to be great. We were all born for greatness. And the thing is, we hold on to this unforgiveness. And let me, let me share this with you. When you forgive someone, you don't forgive them for them. You forgive, you forgive, you do it for you. You do it because it frees you. But most people think when you forgive someone, they don't want to swallow that crow because they think, oh, well, they won. Well, they got, they, they, they got the upper hand or no, I'm not going to forgive them. But when you have that attitude, when you have that unforgiving spirit in you, it's hurting you. And let me show you, I have a, I want you to just think about this. I have this Coke can right here. And this Coke can, it weighs 12 ounces, Manura, right? Yes. So I can hold this Coke can here for, you know, 10 seconds. It doesn't really bother me. But let me ask you a question. What happens if I hold this Coke can like this for 30 minutes? Your arm will hurt. It gets heavier, right? The weight hasn't changed or nothing. But just imagine, what if I hold this Coke can for half a day, for four hours? Oh, dear. It's, it's, it, my hand would probably start shaking. 
You'll and be looking, you'll, you'll become like Popeye on one arm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. But th think about this. So think about this. If I was to hold this can up for a whole month, I wouldn't be able to do it. And sooner or later, I would cave to the weight of the of the can because my heart, my, my hand would just give out. Was Are you this... having a philosopher right now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what happens is this can represents unforgiveness. And at first it doesn't seem like it bothers you, but as time goes on, it gets heavier and heavier. And before you know it, it collapses who you are as a being inside and the unforgiveness takes over and you don't even realize it, but you're not even who you are supposed to be anymore. True. You're not. Yeah, true. And, and, and let me share this key point. In, in my book, I write about the hardest person to forgive. And the hardest person to forgive is yourself, Manura. I was, I, me and my wife had a moment where we were on, on the bed and it was late night and I was just, we were reading some, some, I was reading a book and I just teared up and she was, what's wrong? And I said, well, I read something that made me think of something. And I was beating myself up, not beating myself up still, but I still had some, some things that I was not happy with the way decisions I had made. And she's like, Dan, you're, God's already forgiven you. I said, I know that. But I think that there's different levels of healing. It's like losing weight. You have the first level, you lose five pounds easy, right? Well, then the next five pounds are not as easy, but it's pretty easy. But the last five pounds are always the hardest ones to, to get fit. And that's the way healing is. is that you heal yourself, you forgive, and you feel better right off the bat. Well, then you go into a deeper healing. And then, well, then you end up stuff that's hidden that you don't realize it as time goes on and as you're more aware and you grow as an individual from the inside out. And like, man, I guess I haven't forgiven myself the way I thought I should. And that was me. And this happened this summer. And I'm the one that talks about forgiveness. And But I had forgiven everybody but myself. And I want to encourage your audience watching, Manure, that forgive yourself. There's nothing that you could have done that is so horrific that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our God, cannot forgive you for. Because, you know... We go through life wanting somebody's approval. And you know what the beauty of it is, Manura? We're already approved by God. <clears throat> That's the truth, isn't it? it? We are. We're already, we're already, it's, we're, we're seeking, we're seeking our mom's approval, our dad's approval, our best friend's approval, our, our co-workers' approvals. And guess what? Half of them are just as lost or feeling as lost as you are. <laughs> and I'll tell you, so our, our, in forgiveness, what our priest teaches us is the fact that when you do something wrong and when you ask for forgiveness, just don't ask, hey, Daniel, forgive me. So you have to go back and say, on this day, this happened, and this is what I did. So, Daniel, please forgive me. You know, so it's pieces merged yeah. together. That I realized was the hardest thing to do because now you have to go back. <laughs> but once you do that, that once you ask for forgiveness to a person, right? That yes. person can either now say, yes, I forgive you or not. But now the ball is in their court, right? Well, it's, 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 it's ironic you bring that up because in my business, I believe it's where I'm at right now because I, I, I had to humble myself and the Chevrolet dealership I came from the owner. Um, he was, a, he was like a father to me. I loved him. I respected him. And when we parted wasn't the way I wanted our, our partnership to, to, to end. And uh, I left angry. I left upset just because of me. And, you know, I, I, I didn't do what I was, I, I, did, I left the wrong way. I took employees with me. And to make a long story short, God said, you need to go and ask to for him. You need to go and ask him to forgive you and to apologize. And this lingered for about two or three weeks. And I said, nah, I don't think that's God, right? Well, then as my business was growing, he goes, look, I asked you to do something. You're not doing it. I want you to go back to apologize and get this behind you. 
And I knew it was God. I knew it was God at that moment. And I ended up going back to the Chevrolet dealership. I was nervous. I wasn't sure, like you mentioned right now, how he was going to um, respond to me being there. And I said, look, sir, I don't want anything. I just came to say, I apologize. I'm sorry. And um, I'm doing this because I don't not, I don't want anything. You know, he's a millionaire. And people, you know, you're a new entrepreneur. And right away, somebody thinks you might want something. I said, look, I don't want anything from you. Just, I'm here to, to ask for your forgiveness. And I'm sorry. And when I left there, man, I felt so relieved. I just, I sat in my car and I teared up and because I felt free. And you know that the biggest amazing thing that happened there was, you know, Mr. Vara and Mr. Vara, he's the owner of Vara Chevrolet. He's an amazing, amazing gentleman, top-notch individual. I tell you what, I would, if you would ask me to do anything for him, I would do anything for him. Um, he gave me a big hug and he just said, you know what, I forgive you. And he goes, I'm not mad at you. He goes, I was just disappointed in some decisions that we made, but I forgive you. And I left happy because it was like a father's blessing over his son. And I believe right now where I'm at, I wouldn't be having the success with my book, with my my business, if I wouldn't have gone back and humbled myself and asked for that forgiveness. And sometimes you have to put that pride aside. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's what doesn't allow us to go forward, right? Yes. <laughs> and and we don't realize why we're struggling in our business, in our entrepreneurship, or whatever we're doing, our endeavor. But it's because we have so much anger or grudges towards other people. And um, you just have to let it go. We have to let it go and ask. And, you know, if you made a mistake, if that tells you to go back and humble yourself well you just you just do it as simple as that and i truly believe that's why god's blessed me with people like you in my life sean douglas jake valentine um tony watley and i say y'all because y'all have been big contributors in in my success as, as, as in my business the john maxwell team has been a tremendous support you know just being part of that mentorship and everybody that's in there eric reed is someone that i've, I've met through there and has been a tremendous support through my through my book launch and I'm just grateful but I but I truly believe these connections wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have been humble enough to go back and say that if I wouldn't if I wouldn't have had that humility and confidence and knowing that I was doing the right thing. Because confidence isn't always having confidence that you know what confidence we're gonna win. It's confidence knowing that I'm making the right decision because God asked me to do this. I'm having confidence in God. So in doing that, did you ever have thoughts about, hey, am I doing the right thing? Am I, did you ever have those thoughts? Because I do. <laughs> God knows I do. <laughs> <laughs> about going and asking for forgiveness, you're asking? No, about confidence. Now we are, we're now on, we are fin finished with confidence, with forgiveness. We're yeah, now uh, confidence. You know, yes, yes. I, I talk about confidence in, in, in chapter one. And, and confidence is unique because I had, I, I mean, I've always been the most confident person that there is. And it got to the point, though, where last year where I was confident, but I was kind of arrogant, I think. And when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, I resigned to take care of her. And as she went back to work and she got her Christmas miracle towards the end of the year, I didn't want to go back into the automobile industry. I, I felt God had bigger plans for me. I really felt that in my heart. And one day me and my son were here talking and he just goes, you know, dad, I, uh, I just want to tell you, I love hanging out with you now. I love talking to you. Just like that. We were just talking. And I was like, what do you mean? Right. He goes, yeah. So me joking, and I go, so you didn't like hanging out with me before. And, you know, he kind of just watered his eyes and he said, no, you weren't a nice person sometimes. And when my son told me that it just crushed my heart inside and I just, I knew that I was on the right path to change. And during that transition of, of having Daniel's confidence and Daniel's ego, um, I lost myself because I didn't want to be that person anymore. And there was a period of probably, you know, I would say December, January, February, I lost my confidence in the fact that I was trying to find a godly confidence. And I had, I had had that before. 
And to answer your question, I was lost for, for probably about a month, just not sure of what I wanted to do, how I was going to do it, something totally different. But it trusts me to have confidence not in my own ability, but to have confidence in God. So when I come, when I first put my confidence in God, and then Daniel's confidence came in second, then I knew that there was nothing I couldn't do. But for the longest time, I had confidence in myself. And then I had confidence in myself. And then I had confidence in myself. So God didn't have any self say so in that. And letting go of that and putting God's confidence first and then mine, because he's who I lean on now. That transition period, I got lost because I didn't like that other Daniel before. I didn't like him. And it was hard, but it it humbled me. It, it I mean, there was many nights that I, I, I was frustrated. My wife would tell me it's going to be okay. And I just felt like, you know, you always want to run back to what you know. And for me, it was a car business because I could run it. Right now, I can run a dealership blindfolded. But that's not where God wanted me. But he was breaking me down and building me back up. But the process, let me tell you, it stunk. <laughs> it's called metamorphosis, right? I didn't want to be a but I didn't want to be a butterfly. I was okay being a caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think we are all in that. I am in that transition right now. I'm cocooning myself, so ah. I can feel that. So, um, but but you know, that's another thing. It's like until you realize what you're doing and you keep thinking about it, and you know, disregard the mindset of negative negativity, is yes. that you realize the confidence is coming in. Uh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> like it is. I'm so proud of you. Well, you're the one that gave me my name, so I'm, I'm happy for you. Now, now I'm known as Daniel Gomez, the confidence whisperer, because my friend Manura here, the niche navigator. And I love that. And actually, I'm going to start using that because I really, you gave me the, after going through this, because it's, it's a funny thing, because I think, I can't remember exactly when it happened, but on one of my posts, I put confidence life coach, and I was like, nah, I felt embarrassed to do that. And I just, it just, it was my own mindset, my own limiting beliefs at the time. And when you told me that when we were on your last podcast, I was like, you know what? I like that. And I shared that. And they go, hey, that's pretty awesome. Like the dog whisperer. I said, yeah, but I'm the confidence whisperer. <laughs> yeah, but and, see, that's the thing is like, you have that um, instilled in you. Yeah. You know, I, I met this one lady and she, she showed me an acorn, right? A little acorn. She goes, whatever is in here, it came with it. The only thing we have to do is nurture it so it becomes an oak. We have to water it. We have to, you know, take care of it so it becomes, it sprouts. And that's gotten me into this this thing about the niche navigator, which I do so well, is you know, you have it in you. The only thing is you have to get out of your own way to see it. Yeah. You know, for the longest time, I'll tell you, I, I mean, I spent a long time trying to figure out what I was going to do with all the knowledge that I came out with from John Maxwell and all of the other coaches. And it bothered me because I didn't know what I wanted to do. But over the years, as I look back in my history, over the years, for 40 years, I've been telling people what they should be doing, and they are successful. <laughs> you know, why did I think about this before? So I decided I'm going to be the niche navigator. I'm going to help everybody find their niche because you have it. Yes. But the only problem is that you don't want to weed through the issues because it's hard work. Yes, it is. It's, it's, and it's, it's never easy. Like writing a book, everybody goes, how do you do it? How do you do it? Well, Right. Everybody's. I've had. I've had about um, twenty messages in my inbox saying, "How did you get number? How did you do this? How did you write your book?" And I was waking up at three o'clock in the morning every morning, three thirty for two months straight. And there was times that I would write a page. There was times that I wouldn't write anything because nothing would come out. But it takes persistence. It takes tenacity to not give up on yourself. Because there, there was a moment there when. I got to say, maybe three weeks into it, two and a half weeks, I thought about, you know what, maybe I need to get a different publisher just because I don't know if it was just an excuse I was trying to find. But Darren Palmer, he did an amazing job. He coached me through the process. He goes, 
everything's gonna be okay. Don't worry about it. And uh, but because you're paying, because you're paying money for this product, and it's and it's not, it's not to say it's not cheap. But Darren actually did a really great job guiding me through this process, and it was a blessing because he was he's a Christian brother and he was truthful, and his staff was amazing. And I can honestly say that he gave me that push, and once he gave me that push, it was over. I was on fire. And um, I wanted to come out with something quality content. And I really, truly believe I did that just from the feedback that I've gotten that when you read this book, you're going to take away two great keys somewhere or another that's going to help you improve your life and see something from a different aspect. And maybe it's just loving yourself and really valuing who you are as a person. Or maybe it's finding the confidence that you need, which my book talked about. Or maybe it's forgiveness like we talked about. But one thing I can tell you is when you read it, God's going to use it somehow. And you might, be, you might be saying, I don't believe in God. Well, great, you don't believe in God. There's ungodly stuff in there too, which means it doesn't talk all about God. But it's going to touch your spirit. We all have, we all have, what do you call them? God, Jesus, whatever you call them in your world, in your world, that higher power is going to move in you and show you what he is about and what you're capable of. Because you're not here to be mediocre. You're not here to be average you're here to be a masterpiece and that's what you're here for even you manura you're amazing you're amazing you're an amazing child of god only one amazing person that recognizes the other right remember that <laughs> well thank you thank you thank you but but i'm excited you know today's a launch day right now um when you go on when, when you go on, on on amazon and you buy five ebooks buy five ebooks and that's going to put you in a drawing for saturday for our autograph celebration you have a chance to win 100 dollars. that's a hundred dollar bill two we're going to have two 100 drawings where you just for just for purchasing the ebook version five ebooks you're going to take a picture take a screenshot of it and go and inbox it to me that way i can put your, your name on the drawing and you're going to win a hundred dollars just for spot for, for buying the book and it's a great book it's an ebook I five ebooks, and you're going to be in a drawing for Saturday. So take action on that today. Take advantage of that. It's like kind of it's 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 a, it's a win win. You win the book, and then you get a chance to win a hundred dollars two times. So I would do that right now. <laughs> okay. So you heard him. The book is on sale on Amazon. Look for it. You are born to fly. You were born to fly. Um, don't want to say something that's not right. <laughs> by Daniel Gomez, and it's on Amazon. If you want the ebook version, it's 99 cents today. If you want the hard copy version, his um, CEO has sponsored and given him one third of the money. So instead of 14.95, it's at 9.95. So you want to go and grab your copy. It seems to be a well book. I've read parts of it. And it's really right. My own story. And one day I'll give this to you, you Daniel, and say, this is my book. <laughs> awesome. But um, you are awesome, and you are such an enthusiastic person. I don't understand why we have an echo. <clears throat> but um, you, your enthusiasm is very intense, and I love that. Well, thank you. Thank you. This is, you know... I like this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes toward the end of the night, I'm I, I'm drained just from all the work that we do during the day. But, you know, I, I try to bring positive energy, positive emotions to everyone I meet and just to really have them believe in themselves. And some of that is just transferring that enthusiasm into them because, you know, once they see the fact that they are a person of value, they, they are a woman of value or a child or a student of value that they, they, they still smile more and once you smile more, everything else is just, it comes easier. So thank you for that compliment. You are most welcome. For those of you who are watching, please like, subscribe, and share this video. We want uh, Daniel Gomez is already a bestseller, but we want him to become the best of the bestest, right? <laughs> well, actually, I have a program. <laughs> I'm developing a program right now. Um, my book's going into a workbook. Actually, it's going to turn into a workbook. And uh, I'm going to do a youth version, which I'm going to start working on here um, towards the end of the year, beginning of the year. And proceeds from the book, the, the reason I'm pushing the book even more is to get um, income in for to do the program for the students 
because I truly believe that um, I myself, I was a suicide. I, I, I attempted suicide when I was in high school. And there's a lot of students out there that need love, that need attention. And that there's some way I can add value to them, whether it's going to high school and speaking to them and, and giving them a workbook that they can kind of go through. Um, I'm actually having a meeting with Kim Sutton today. And we're going to talk about some stuff. But she's the one helping me do my um, funnel and my confidence program. So, you know, it, a good portion of the proceeds are going to go to the students. So just keep that in mind. It's not about me being me. It's about us giving back to you young adults and students that need a word of encouragement and the you you were born to fly workbook is going to be coming out i'm not going to say when because i thought my book was going to be out two months ago and it's really coming out now because i don't like i don't like to put out junk i don't like to put out <clears throat> stuff just to put it out i want to put out something with quality so that's coming for the kids for the youth so when you support you were born to fly the book ebook or hardback portion of that goes the proceeds go to our youth program for the youth you were born to fly Okay, so now you have a cause. So go get it. Yes. Thank you, Danielle. I appreciate you for being on the show. Anna All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Manera, for having me. And remember, you are going to fly. Woo! God bless you. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. If you enjoyed our show, please share and subscribe to this channel. And for more content, please join our Facebook group called Navigate to Your Niche.